This is your High Desert Sports Report, the Victor Valley's only weekly action highlights sports program, covering our area's schools, teams, athletes, and sporting events. Two lopsided shutouts and one cliffhanger on the first night of league games for MRL and DSL teams Carson Cox scored four touchdowns and the Oak Hills defense blanked Hesperia as the Bulldogs opened defense of their Mojave River League title with the 34 to nothing victory. Jacob Webster hit James Swain on a 17-yard scoring pass to account for the fifth Bulldogs touchdown. This excellent photograph is Jacob Webster alongside Johnny Notariani number 65, 6'2", 275 pound fellow junior. The four touchdowns by Carson Cox run his season total to 20 in Oak Hills, six games, and run Robert Metzger's winning streak in MRL games to 17. He has never lost a league game as head coach of the Bulldogs. Jace Weiss did all the scoring for Silverado in what many see as an upset of the defending league champion Cougars at Granite Hills. The senior quarterback scored on runs of 4, 5, and 25 yards. The 18-12 victory, can we call this the War of 1812? The third win in a row for Kieran Jones's Hawks after they went 0-3 to start the season. Amir Sneed and Braylon Salazar scored the Granite Hills touchdowns. Barstow rolled over Atalanto with the Aztecs defense shutting out the Saints. Dwayne Williams ran for a touchdown and passed for two more. Lolo Lealofi and Tez Newton caught scoring passes. Running back Nicholas Goa and returning all-league wide receiver John T. Drisdom ran for touchdowns. Clay Lillamena's Aztecs go to 5-1 and one on the year. The Aztecs host the undefeated Victor Valley Jackrabbits next. Serrano improved to 4-1 and one on the year by blanking winless Burroughs. Trevor McSween's four touchdowns come on runs of 49, 47, 10, and 9-yard runs. Gavin Lamb and Isaiah Romo also ran for touchdowns. For Casey Mahalchuk's Diamondbacks, Serrano is at Oak Hills next. Jacob Higgs throws three first-quarter scoring passes and adds one more touchdown pass in the fourth quarter in Apple Valley's 41-6 win at Sultana. The first touchdown comes on an unbelievable demonstration of award-worthy choreography on the part of the pass receiver. It is fourth and short at midfield. Jacob Higgs hits Dominic Bechtel at the 30. The all-league tight end periers over a diving defender at the 20, keeps his balance, redirects at the 10, and sprints into the end zone. Moves one would not expect from a 6'3", 204-pound tight end. 7 nothing Sun Devils, three and a half minutes in. Defensive takeaways lead to the next two touchdowns. Seth Robinson strips the ball. Frankie Aguiar chases it and falls on it. The Sun Devils have it first and goal at the three. Three plays later and a couple of penalties later, third and goal at the nine. Braden Cady is the target on the crossing pattern. The 6'2", 185-pound senior catches the pass in stride, carries it across the goal line, and it's 13 to nothing. Frankie Aguiar makes the second of his three big plays the first half. The junior linebacker pounces on the loose ball, terminating Sultana's second possession. Jake Higgs makes sure the turnover-prone Sultans pay. The 6'1", 170-pound senior southpaw scrambles, rolls right, and sidearms the strike to wide open Dylan Gerard. This 6'1", 165-pound junior leads Apple Valley receivers and passes caught coming in. Dylan Gerard is the recipient of Jacob Higgs's fourth-quarter scoring pass, a 27-yard play. 
Jake Higgs ran for a touchdown, and senior Johnny Cisneros raced 58 yards to score to account for the other Sun Devils touchdowns. Sultana's running game was stifled by plays like this. Johnny Cisneros, 25, with the tackle for a loss. Johnny Cisneros is 5'8", 165. 23 is Seth Robinson. This sack by Frankie Aguiar exemplifies the relentless pressure the Sun Devils put on Sultana's quarterback. Frankie Aguiar is 5'10", 160, a junior. Robert Maris's Sun Devils host Hesperia next. Sultana highlights include this interception by Isaiah Vargas, the 5'10", 135-pound senior free safety. This is the second interception on the year for the two-way starter, also a wide receiver. Obigalindo's Sultans go to Burroughs next. We Got em Tease presents this high school football report. We Got em Tease, your headquarters for custom screen printing and mastercraft embroidery designs. We Got em. official CIF sanctioned Chanel patches or varsity jackets. We Got em Tease, two locations, Apple Valley and Upland. Oh yeah, We Got em Tease. Your High Desert Sports Report is brought to you by Down Home Grill in Victorville on the corner of Bear Valley Road and Ridgecrest Road. Bid fast and last, sold on supporting High Desert Sports. The Bradco Companies supporting all of the teams and sports programs throughout the Mojave River Valley. Iwanzak Law Firm. Trial lawyers for serious problems. Volu Quality Truck Body. Volu manufactures state-of-the-art truck bodies for the construction industry nationwide. We got them tees. Your headquarters for custom screen printing and mastercraft embroidery design. And by the Holiday Inn in Victorville. The Holiday Inn, conference and convention center for the high desert. The Holiday Inn, supporting the teams, schools, and sports programs throughout the Victor Valley. Flashing back to headlines and headline makers on this date in high desert history, Apple Valley battles the Aztecs in Barstow in 2016. Silverado comes from behind to storm past Los Osos in 2017. This 12-year-old explains the transition into the restricted class at wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing back in 2013. Well, one, you could go a whole lot faster through the corners. Quilts of Valor are presented at Midway's Car Show to benefit High Desert Marines in 2019. The Apple Valley Sun Devils used a familiar scheme of events to capture their fifth straight win of the season, get ahead early, capitalize on the opponent's mistakes, score in the final moments of the first half, throw in a defensive touchdown the second half, and if necessary, maintain ball control late in the game to pull out the victory. It was Mossy Bell to Kayshawn Griffin with the clutch just before halftime touchdown reception against Barstow, a key play leading to the Sun Devils' 28-21 win over the Aztecs. Uh, honestly, it was a big play. It was coming to my side, so I know I had to run and make a big play. The run out the clock ball control at game's end was necessary. The Barstow Aztecs gave Apple Valley all it could handle, answering each of the first three Sun Devils touchdowns with long, time-consuming scoring drives of their own with their grinded-out offensive attack. Ball control proved decisive as the Sun Devils kept the ball the final seven minutes of the ball game after the Aztecs had pulled within seven at 28-21. The undefeated Sun Devils beat all five Desert Sky League teams it faced in running their record to 5-0 before opening Mojave River League play next week against the Oak Hills Bulldogs. Yes, uh, how important is it going into league play on uh, it, it's great. It gives us a great boost, and we're, we're not going to take it to our heads. We've got to still continue to work and just keep on the grind. Levi Taylor throws six touchdown passes, four caught by Latavian Staples, and Silverado storms back in the second half to trounce the Grizzlies of Los Osos 63-34. 
DeAndre Nolan returns the second half kickoff 90 yards to give the Hawks their first lead of the ball game after Los Osos led 27-21 at the half. DeAndre Nolan's 14-yard touchdown reception gives the home team Hawks a 42-34 lead just past the midway point in the third quarter. Taj Butcher's 34-yard touchdown puts Silverado ahead to stay 35-34, a minute and a half after Deontay Nolan's kickoff return open second half scoring. Taj Butcher had scored Silverado's first touchdown of the game on a 50-yard run. The player the Grizzlies could not contain, though, is Latavian Staples, whose touchdown passes come on plays from 12 yards, 14 yards, 47 yards, and 55 yards. Levi Taylor's six scoring passes on the night give him 26 TD passes in six games. The slant pattern, the curtain call for Tay Staples when it comes to scoring this game. The final score, Hawks 63, Grizzlies 34. You think the team's where you want to be as you get league play started? Yeah, but then no again because we start off slow in the first half. But if we start off fast in the first half, then we'll be good. And we'll just, we wouldn't have any trouble at all. Uh, not quite yet. We're looking to get... Um, we're looking to score on the first drive every game. I mean, that's been a challenge that we can't quite overcome yet, but we're looking to do that and just capitalize on our small mistakes that we made today and just overall get better. The Hawks go on to win the Desert Sky League Championship in 2017, going undefeated against DSL opponents. 12-year-old Jason Little Jason Andrews, three to four seasons into racing, first year in restricted class. What's the biggest difference now that you're up into restricted compared to racing before? Well, one, you could go a whole lot faster through the corners, and it's just fun getting a little bit sideways almost every Saturday. Jason's dad, a track champion in stock car racing, note the number 26 and similar color scheme of the race cars. You're driving 26, that's a number that's been handed down. How did you get interested in racing? How did you get started? Well, when my dad was racing stock cars, I was always watching him. And one day I was like, Dad, can I race? He was like, are you sure? I was like, yeah. Little Jason also answers to Bones. But where did you come up with the nickname Bones? Well. I was a little kid when it, like, I was three when it started. My uncle started it. I honestly don't understand how. Was it Uncle Kevin, the K-Dog, throwing his nephew the Bones nickname? No, turns out his Uncle Tommy once said to him, What's up, J-Bones? And a couple of days later, when his mom said, Jason, come to Mommy, he looked at his dad and mom, took the binky out of his mouth, and said, No, 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 call me Yay Bones. He's answered to that ever since. He has also answered the call when it comes to racing. His first restricted class victory in the main in September. Sure, not to be his last. Presentation of Quilts of Valor, patriotic high point of the 6th Annual Car and Motorcycle Show to benefit High Desert Marines at Midway Home Solutions. The United States Marine Corps Mounted Color Guard, the stirring presentation of the colors, a flyover, setting the tone for the quilts of valor bestowed to veterans. In a word, it means patriotism, you know, to um, be supported by folks that I don't even know that appreciate the service and sacrifice that I've made. It's really humbling. You know. Are still young Marines? You know, come forward, uh, please. These ladies. You're not in trouble. Just come on down. Do phenomenal work. Outstanding work. And it's, it's all about morale. Get a nice care package in the mail. I mean, that's what really boosts up morale, and, and I'm I'm a recipient of that. So I'm gratefully appreciative of, of all the support that. Saying about this quilt, the, the cold nights that I did spend in Afghanistan, and and um, how awesome it would have been to have then. But but now to have it moving forward, and to remember the service that was made, and and more than that, to remember the people that appreciated the freedom that that service provides them. Uh, it's just so gratifying, and so humbling, and and to know that uh, there's just so much support out there sometimes it's felt sometimes it's not so having a quilt is something tangible that you can hold on to and, and you can look back and feel appreciated and it's beyond words really 
Words of appreciation were expressed by San Bernardino County First District Supervisor Robert Lovingood, who presented plaques to Colonel Tim Hill of the High Desert Marines and then to Don Logger of Midway Home Solutions. It's a great car show and we enjoy giving back to our community. It makes, it, it, it's, we support how many groups? 16, 15 groups? Six, 16 charities. Yeah, 16 different charities. And we do it through all over the high desert. This Navy veteran shows his support for High Desert Marines entering his classic vehicle in the car show. It's a 1958 Morgan Plus 4 two-seat Roadster. Tell me a little bit more about it. Well, I've had it since 1988. I bought it from a gentleman in uh, Fullerton. It was in pieces, completely disassembled. And uh, I finished restoring it in 2000. I'm in a 40 Chevy. I have a 40 Chevy Deluxe Coupe and uh, with 350 engine in it and it's uh, pearl white with some wild flames on it. it. I love it. It's pretty neat. Thank you for being here. Crews and buddies have supported this from day one. To... Uh, thank you, Terry, and, and uh, God bless America. That's what it's all about. Flashing back to headline makers years past. Places to go, things to do in and around the high desert and points beyond. Presented by the Holiday Inn, Conference and Convention Center for the High Desert, and favored destination for travelers and visitors to the Victor Valley. In the 46 to nothing thumping of L.A. Pierce. Apple Valley outlasts Sultana 28 to 14 in this Mojave River League opener between two leading contenders for the MRL title. Xavier Salazar, the first Sun Devils touchdown. Zyron Belcher scores on a first half run of 14 yards and this third quarter romp from 36 yards. This is a penalty marred, slow-moving battle. There are more outstanding plays on defense than on offense for both teams. Apple Valley's defensive scheme of things was superb from the start, zeroing in on quarterback Jacob Higgs. Zyron Belcher, six, with the tackle in Sultana's opening possession. This gang tackling of Jacob Higgs is led by Anthony Navarro, 40, Anthony Navarro is 6'5", 210, a junior defensive end. The aggressive defensive efforts are not scaled back even after Coach Kyle Godfrey's Sun Devils defenders are penalized repeatedly for being overly aggressive. Ethan Garibay is flagged for unsportsmanlike conduct when he drags the scrambling Jacob Higgs down. Ethan Garibay is 6'4", 202, a senior middle linebacker. The Sun Devils are called for roughing the punter. The Sultans get more first downs the first half by way of penalties than running or passing. Aiden Sanchez, 22, is penalized for unsportsmanlike conduct after this gang tackle. Jordan Rojas, 29, throws Jacob Higgs for a loss. Jordan Rojas is a 5'8", 187-pound senior middle linebacker. Defensive highlights include Tyler Moon, 11, thwarting Sultana's razzle-dazzle double reverse pass attempt. Tyler Moon picks off the underthrown pass. The 5'10", 155-pound Tyler Moon is a senior cornerback and co-captain. Sultana's defense was at its best when their backs are up against the wall three times. The Sultans take over on downs when the Sun Devils had first and goal. It is Eric Ruiz, 88, with this tackle for a loss. Eric Ruiz is 6'2", 197, a junior defensive end. Tyler Goodwin, 15, stops the ball carrier for no gain in this goal line stand. Tyler Goodwin is a senior cornerback listed at 6'1", 170. Rico Diaz Juarez, 72, stands his ground on this fourth down at the goal line. 
The senior defensive tackle is 6'2", 280. Free safety, Isaiah Vargas intercepts, interrupting this Sun Devils advance in the red zone. Isaiah Vargas, 5'8", 120, a junior. The Sun Devils cannot contain Jacob Higgs the entire game. The 6'1", 175-pound junior directs a third-quarter scoring drive, connecting with top receiver LaMason Waller III, who reminds us that one of the most important aspects of any athletic competition is have fun when you are out there. LaMason Waller III is a bona fide Division I prospect. The junior wide receiver is 6'2", 180. Jacob Higgs polishes off the first scoring drive with a run from three yards out. Jacob Higgs scrambles and hits Albert Harden. Here, the 5'10", 157-pound senior scores Sultana's second touchdown late in the fourth quarter. Sultana gambles repeatedly throughout. This one pays off when the punter runs for first down from deep in his own territory. Same second quarter series, the punter suffers a worse fate when the snap from center sails over his head. This time, he's met with a vicious tackle by Jordan Rojas. Sultana coaches scream for a helmet-to-helmet -helmet violation. Head coach T.C. Cleveland's argument is so adamant that he is ejected. The Sun Devils capitalize immediately. Not only was Sultana denied a first down, a 15-yard penalty was tacked on. The ball is at the 14. Zyron Belcher gets outside and scores. It is 12 to nothing at the half. The Sun Devils add to that lead on Zyron Belcher's 36-yard run on their first possession of the second half. That made it 18 to nothing. Kyler Peters boots a 20-yard field goal with five minutes to go in the third. It is 21 to nothing. The Sun Devils will have four touchdowns called back due to penalties, three of them on Noah Seeley scoring passes. The 5'11", 190-pound senior co-captain scrambles here, carrying for 20 yards. Noah Seeley finally gets a scoring pass to stand when he hits Jared Soria on this play from five yards out. The Sun Devils' win moves them to 3-2 and two on the year. Sultana falls to 2-4. and four. It felt year. good! It felt so good. <laughs> Smiles everywhere, good feelings. Everybody's having a good time tonight. The cause of jubilation? The first Victor Valley College victory of the R.T. Allen era. Kenyard Edwards Jr. scores four touchdowns, including this 80-yard race to the end zone in the 46 to nothing thumping of L.A. Pierce. Kenyard Edwards Jr. touchdowns come on runs of 17, 23, and 15 yards in addition to the 80-yarder. Impressive as the offense is, the Rams' defense is equally magnificent, limiting the visiting Brahmas to 125 yards total offense. I like the way how we all um, executed. We all um, came after the uh, ball. Everybody got in. Uh, I made some other plays. And that's it. Got it. The Rams' defense has the Brahmas at bay from the start. The entire left side of the defense is upon the quarterback. Gabe Saudi Jr., first to lay a hand on him. 22, Mac Miller. 44 is Logan Soriano. 17, Deshaun Griffin. Back-to-back -back tackles for a loss. Gabe Saudi Jr. is 6'1", 240. Sophomore linebacker and defensive captain from Apple Valley. Gabe, what did you like best about the way that defense played tonight? I like the way our defense executed and flew around to the ball, and everybody got a chance to make a play tonight. Jordan Payne, the 6'3", 215-pound sophomore linebacker from Pensacola, Florida, displaying his lateral pursuit speed, running down the ball carrier from behind on the reverse. The Rams' defense held L.A. Pierce to 50 yards rushing. A bobbled snap on fourth down turns the ball over to the Rams at the 38. This is second and eight at the 36. Brandon Wingle to Jalen Yancey for the first down. First of six receptions on the day for Jalen Yancey, the 5'11", 195-pound freshman and former Atlanta Saint. 
Third and one at the 17. Kenyard Edwards Jr. caps the five-play, 38-yard drive, racing to the outside and sprinting untouched to the end zone. Seven to nothing, Rams, five minutes in. Touchdown number two completes VVC's second possession. Kenyard Edwards Jr. with the 23-yard dash to pay dirt, or pay turf as the case may be, again untouched. 14 to nothing, Rams, with five minutes remaining in the first quarter. L.A. Pierce responds with the drive taking them deep into VVC territory. And this fourth down play at the 11, Keyshawn Wilson drops the scrambling quarterback and the Rams take over on downs. Keyshawn Wilson, the six foot 180 pound sophomore defensive back, records five solo tackles this day and you'll see him break up pass attempts in red zone coverage later on that preserve the Victor Valley College shutout. All in all, an outstanding game for the former Atalanto Saint. Tangible traits that make Kenyard Edwards Jr. such an outstanding ball carrier include strength and balance. Watch him shed one tackle or meet another head on and spin away for added yardage on this eight yard carry, the final play of the first quarter. O-line, guards Russell Chapman, 74, Ruben Savaria, 77, Milan Nadzikoff, 56, and Kevin Hoskins, 53. Center Chris Torres Jr., 76. Kenyard Edwards Jr. slips out of an arm tackle, reverses field, gets a downfield block from Alex Gonzalez, and carries for 32 yards. He averages just under 11 yards a carry this game. From the 15 through an enormous hole, the third touchdown for Kenyard Edwards Jr., again untouched. Two minutes into the second quarter, 21 to nothing, Rams. That's the score at the half. Offensive play had been sluggish through most of the second quarter, and Coach Artie Allen addressed that at halftime. Uh, it was definitely a halftime when our coaches told us we need to play better. We didn't work. Midway through the third quarter, the biggest play of the day, Kenyard Edwards Jr. breaks a tackle in the backfield, cuts back and to the outside and outruns the Brahmas secondary for his 80-yard touchdown. It's in a big hole, made a, made a miss, and my brother told me, took it to the house. You broke a tackle in the backfield, though. Yeah. You got to make everybody miss. That's the best thing as a running back. So you getting tired? Nah. <laughs> I mean, somewhat, but it's good for the team. Keep her going. Thank you. The Rams add another third quarter touchdown on Brandon Wingle's perfectly thrown pass to LeSean Potts from nine yards out. The final touchdown is also a Brandon Wingle to LeSean Potts connection, 64 yards with just under four minutes left to play. The former Bakersfield Christian High School All-American offers his analysis. Congratulations on the win, Brandon. What did you like best about the way the offense played tonight? Um, I think we played well together, and I think uh, we did make a lot. Even though we didn't make a lot of mistakes, we came back and we bounced back all those mistakes and we fixed them. And uh, I just think we played well as a team. What did you like best, Chris, about the way this uh, offense played tonight? Definitely today we clicked a lot better on the line, and as a receiver, as a whole offense, we clicked better today. Definitely. Last week was a tough loss, but. This week, we just need to continue to get better. Good job. Congratulations. Here are some of the outstanding individual plays by Rams defenders. Former Oak Hills Bulldog Chase Blue, the tackle for a loss. Chase Blue, 6'2", 205-pound freshman linebacker. Marquise Cato stays with the deep pass and registers his third interception of the season. Marquise Cato is 5'9", 170, a freshman defensive back shown alongside fellow former Apple Valley Sun Devil Gabe Soddy Jr. Gang tackle for a loss. 13 times Rams defenders throw Brahma's ball carriers for a loss. This is the final L.A. Pierce deep penetration into Rams territory and it requires excellent play by defensive backs in pass coverage breaking up what otherwise would be scoring passes. Keyshawn Wilson on the third and goal. Then, when the Brahma quarterback scrambles to avoid the pass rush, Michael Barnett times his contact perfectly to prevent the completion. Michael Barnett is 5'11", 160, a sophomore and another former Atalanto Saint. The Rams are right back home the following Saturday, hosting Compton. Flashing back to headline makers years past, presented by the Holiday Inn, Conference and Convention Center for the High Desert, and favored destination for travelers and visitors to the Victor Valley.
the Sage Hill High Desert Sports Report, the Victor Valley's only weekly action highlights sports program, covering our area's schools, teams, athletes, and sporting events. That's going to do it for this week's edition of your High Desert Sports Report. Thanks for joining us. Hope you can be with us next time around.